Hi, I'm Matthew Burchette, and this is Curator on the Loose. Boeing submitted their proposal for the B-29 long-range heavy bomber to the Army in 1940, long before the United States entered World War II. One of the largest aircraft of World War II, the B-29 carried state-of-the-art technology, including a pressurized cabin and an analog computer-controlled fire control system that allowed the four machine gun turrets to be operated remotely. B-29s were primarily used in the Pacific Theater, where they flew from island bases conducting long-range attacks on the Japanese home islands. However, the aircraft's cutting-edge design allowed it to remain in Air Force service throughout the 1950s as an aerial tanker and weather reconnaissance and air-sea rescue platform. The last superfortresses were retired in 1960. Nearly 4,000 B-29s were built, and the $3 billion design and production costs equivalent to $43 billion today, far exceeded the $1.9 billion price tag of the Atomic Bombs Manhattan Project. We're here with Rich Hasty. Now, Rich, you're one of the volunteers at the Museum of Flight, and you've been working on this plane for what? For pretty close to 20 years. It's amazing, and not only is it gorgeous on the outside, it's even cooler on the inside, specifically the computerized fire control system. Tell me a little bit of the history of how this system came about and how it actually works. Well, the B-29 was pressurized, so they needed to come up with a, a way of running the guns in a pressurized environment. So the guns are separated from the pressurized environment, and they came up with this, with this computer-controlled uh, gunnery system. So basically, instead of putting a, a guy in a pressurized turret, which we just didn't have really the technology to do, we came up with a system where the guy sits in the pressurized fuselage, but then controls the turret, which might be three yards, four yards away from him. Correct. Well, that presents some problems. Yes. <laughs> Well, what we have here is the site for this system, one for each gunner. The site consists of a, a reticle inside that the gunner would point at the aircraft. The site itself contains digital measuring devices, which will tell the computer azimuth and elevation where the site is aimed. There's a, a, a control up in the next to the navigator he would input the uh, aircraft altitude, aircraft speed, and the temperature. From that, the computer could determine the density of the atmosphere. And then the computer would compute what the bullet drop would be oh, over the range, use the uh, gyroscopes to compute what the lead should be, and then you turn it on and the guns, the guns fire. Wow, that's amazing. And I just want to remind you guys, this is all with vacuum tubes. We're not talking digital space age kind of stuff. Vacuum tubes, gears, and wires. That's what this thing was using, and it was still knocking down Zeros and Dinas and Radins at an incredible rate. That is amazing. This is, so, do you mind if I play with this? Go ahead. Because I got to play with it. Come on. Oh, oh my God, that's so cool. This is really cool. And what I love is that it's got a fail safe in it that I can't, I can't shoot myself. Correct. That is amazing. Are you up for going inside and taking a look at it in there? Sure we okay, yeah, let's check this out. So Rich, you were telling me this black box right here, that's actually the computer for the, the central fire control system. For one of the guns of the central computer. 
fire control system. Each just one of the each guns. gun had its own computer. Wow, this thing is that's a monster. Yes, I mean we're not talking, you know, computer. Correct. We're talking computer. <laughs> that's crazy, and that's just for one gun turret. For one gun. Wow, man, that is not a small piece of equipment, but it's amazing what it could do. And for the time, you know, that is pretty pretty small. It's not ENIAC. It's not an entire right. basement of a building. And for the time, it did one thing. Compute the solution for that gun. Wow. I mean, the more, again, the more I learn about this plane, the more impressed I am. All right, we are now in the CFC, or the Central Fire Control Center. And that was where all of the major gunners sat. In fact, right here where my arm is, is what was called the barber's chair. So, Rich, tell us about the chair and actually what happened right here. Okay, the uh, upper gunner was the principal gunner on the aircraft. So he's got a 360 degree observation on the upper, upper part. The gunners were able to switch so that whoever had the best view of uh, oncoming aircraft could be either the this gunner or either of the two two side gunners. So they would uh, determine who had the best shot at it and then they would take control of the guns. Wow. You know, Rich, one place we haven't been yet? Cockpit. All right, let's go there. Ooh, yeah. I love it. Man, this is this is not the most comfortable position in the plane. My little flip up seat here. Um, but what's really cool is this. I can flip out that gun sight that we saw earlier. And now I become a gunner and not just a bombardier. And I could have a pretty good view of what's going on around me. Now, you kind of got to contort yourself to really look through this thing. And I bet there was a lot of action going on when it got hot, but that's pretty neat that you could do all of this stuff. And then of course, right in front of me is the old Norden bomb site, which, you know, most of the time you're hunkered over as you're going on your bomb run. Um, but I bet this was an amazing place to be because you've got such a great view of up here. It would also be a little bit terrifying as you saw a, a zero or a Zeke or something coming right at you. But you've always got, you know, four 50 caliber machine guns to, to help you out, I guess. Six. Um, yeah, that's true. You've got four on top and then two on the bottom. Right. Now, could you fire both turrets simultaneously? Yes. Wow, that's a lot of weaponry to bear on a single plane. Whew, that's nuts. All right, well, here we are in the bomb bay. Just one of two bomb bays on the B-29. Now, the B-29 was kind of interesting because you've got two bomb bays. You don't want to drop all your load from one bomb bay at first because it'll throw off your weight. So it would alternate. You drop a bomb from the front, you drop a bomb from the back. Front, back, front, back. That way your weight stayed the same all the way through the bomb run. The other thing about the B-29 was it had a huge bomb load, up to 20,000 pounds. So now we're back in the Central Fire Control Center, but we're in a specific place this is the ECM set, electronic countermeasure set that a B-29 would carry. And this is Dale Thompson. He didn't really come with the plane, but he kind of lives with the plane. He's also one of our amazing volunteers. And you've got how many years working on this sucker? Oh, almost 20, I believe. <laughs> right. So tell us a little bit about the ECM set. What did this thing actually do? The electronic countermeasure position was one of the ability to listen to the enemy 
talking to their fighters, between fighter and ground and fighter to fighter, and they could direct themselves to come after the B-29s. Now, the uh, electronic countermeasure officer will set this up and tune it looking for their channel. And he can tell by sound with headphones and also by the pattern on an oscilloscope. Oh, wow. When he finds that, he takes the frequency from this and goes over to something we don't have yet, and that is a transmitter that will transmit on those same frequencies. He zeroes in on their frequencies, turns in hash noise, and he obliterates their ability to use that channel. No kidding. Now, he also has another receiver, which we don't have, and we're waiting for it to come out of somebody's basement sometime. <laughs> and with it, he would look again with this oscilloscope look for their radar frequencies and zero in on their radar and then he had another transmitter for that high frequency turn it on and their scope would be obliterated they couldn't see anything it would just be wow. filled with hash like white noise almost that's right yeah. now i notice there's a red light that's on does this stuff work like the rest of the plane? It does, and I can turn it on now. Yeah, that'd be yeah. awesome. <laughs> Man, there is nothing about this plane that is quiet. No. <laughs> Dino motors are very, very nice. Now, what you see here is a Seattle radio station on the telescope. Really? He would use that to identify the station that he was going after. A lot of noise and stuff. But voices talking back and forth will have particular patterns. And he zeroes in on those. If necessary, if you haven't found them yet, you can turn on a motor and it will scan for him. And then when he sees something, he can stop it and he can then fine tune and order that one. Take that number and put it on the transmitter. Wow, that is really cool. <laughs> so here we are in the tail gunner section, and as you can see, it's pretty cramped. In fact, it's so cramped. I can't even get the seat down. I'm literally standing up. Now, what you'll notice is the B-29 had a couple of different tail configurations when it came to armament. The original equipment was 250s and a 20 millimeter cannon. Unfortunately, the 20 millimeter cannon fired a little bit differently than those 50 caliber bullets. Plus, it was heavy, so a lot of crews just removed them and sometimes replaced it with a third 50, or they just kept two 50s and called it a good day. Okay, thank you all for tuning in. We really appreciate you guys. And a huge shout out to Grayson in Houston for watching. He loves the B-29, and I am really happy that he tunes in to Curator on the Loose. The rest of you, keep tuning in, because you never know where we're going to be on the loose next. Thank you. It's a big, heavy, and powerful airplane. Bigger, heavier, and more powerful than anything you've ever flown. For that reason, it must be handled gently. Even a super bomber is no good to the Army if it's in little busted up pieces. But don't get jittery. The 29 is a sweet ship to handle.